All right, guys, part two of the largest unboxing I've ever done. These watches are from Keith, and each one has its own little thing going on. So let's just get into it, because there is a lot of watches. Let's do some G-Shocks, shall we? So we have a G-Shock Square here. This has the green, all that good stuff. I've videoed this one before. Uh, what is it? A GM... 5600B something. I don't know, guys. I'm not going to be able to know all the models and names of these watches. So there's the G-Shock. Here's a G-Shock. This one's actually really cool. It's pretty comfortable. And it is the Carbon Core version. So it's a GST-B200. So we have that guy on strap. I think there is the same watch. Yeah, is this? Yeah, this is that right here. It's the same watch, but on a metal bracelet. Adds a little more bling to the the whole equation, so he ended up getting one on bracelet and one on strap because he liked it. I get it. It's awesome. Uh, G-Shocks. Let's look at this one. This, I believe, is a MTG series, if I'm not mistaken. Is it not? Um, GST B100. Maybe it's not an MTG, uh, but it kind of has that early signs of a uh, MTG. Uh, let's look at this one. I think this is though, right? Yeah, this is definitely an MTG. So that's why I said it, it kind of reminds me of the earlier MTG. So you can obviously see the resemblance. But here's this guy on bracelet, of course. Uh, way more beastly, if you will. Needs a little cleaning. Uh, where's the model number on this thing? I don't know. You guys would probably know. But there's a beast of a G-Shock. Another G-Shock MTG. Uh, this is the one that I actually owned. I owned a red one like this. I bought it when these this particular uh, generation first came out, and I loved it because it's obviously a lot smaller than this one, and it just wears really good. Now, you could get these on bracelet as well, but this one's on a heavy-duty rubber strap. So there's that one. Um, are there more G-Shocks? Well, there's this G-Shock, which is, I believe, a mod, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure... If these are aftermarket parts, I mean, that feels super high quality, like it's a factory one. Uh, but you guys will have to let me know. this. But this module doesn't go with this bracelet in, in case. So I'm not sure the configuration there or how he came about it. I'll have to hit him up and ask him. Um, you know, I, I still have this G-Shock sitting out because he sent me a few watches with dead batteries. This one has a dead battery. Uh, let's Let's... Talk dead batteries, all right? We got another watch here, dead battery. This is a, um, what brand is this? It's a GMT Tor Torgion, Torgio or something. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't think I've ever videoed one of these, but pretty cool looking watch, uh, dead battery. So I either have to put a battery in it. It's hard to sell a watch with a dead battery, so I gotta figure out and throw a battery in it. Uh, another dead battery one, Glycine Airman. I didn't even know the Airman came in uh, quartz so i learned something there apparently so i'll have to do a little bit of research on that but here this guy is so dual time zones and the extra tracking there so i'll have to get a battery in that guy i think most of these other ones are pretty much good to go here's a casio edifice honda racing one very similar, it must have been an earlier generation. Remember that Honda Racing one I just did? You can see tough solar, but it's uh, double ticking there, showing that it's low on juice. So I'm gonna make sure I get a good solar charge on that guy. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we have some more ticking watches here. Let's continue on with some quartz. We have a GMT Timex, these are pretty cool. Uh, is that bi-directional? Nope, it's unidirectional bezel, interesting. Okay, so very cool, all blacked out. Fun Timex, potentially, for someone. And another Timex, Quartz, ticking along. And this guy is that uh, Q model on the bracelet, so that one's pretty fun. Uh, more Quartz, more Quartz. What do we have here? We have the, the uh, what do they call the electrician, the ELZ. So this is the yellow one. with the. I just think that's really cool with the wires, and you can see the capacitor there, or whatever that is. Uh, and then the three volt system going on there. So pretty fun watch on the larger side for sure. Uh, another quartz watch, the, how do you say this? I took this, is it the Mathy Tissot? And it's uh, Geneve. So pretty cool, fun quartz watch. 
1886. I'm sure there's some history involved with that one. Really nice leather strap that came with it too. There's that guy. Um, I think other than this guy, I think that's it for the quartz. We have the um, Bulova uh, Moon Watch type looking thing here, the Apollo uh, model here on the, an aftermarket strap. Some of these didn't come with the factory straps and stuff like that, so I'm not sure where they went or they were lost in the process of ownership, but regardless, they're gone. Uh, next up here, we have a Hamilton Diver automatic on a silicon strap. This is a little bit smaller one too. So I don't know if I've done a video on this one. Not the best sounding click on a bezel, but it's solid. So nice, solid, automatic, affordable Hamilton Diver there. Uh, we have a Spinnaker yellow dial. That's really fun. You don't see a ton of yellow dial divers out there. And a heavy duty mesh bracelet. So, man, that thing is a tank as well. So there's that guy, that's an automatic. Uh, how about this one? I'm not familiar with this brand either. RLG, it is an automatic. And screw down crown, kind of a super compressor style case. Let's wind it up and see if we can get it started. There we go, second hand sweep. So just a pretty cool looking baby blue dialed compressor style watch. On a, Nice rubber strap. Uh, we have also an Orient Defender. I have not handled one of these in a long time either. And it has a nice strap. Really nice strap, actually. I'm digging this. It's a two-piece, but man, it's thick and it kind of fits the overall style of the watch. You got a couple of loose threads there. Pop those off. But these are fun, cool watches there, those Defenders for sure. Uh, and then... We're not quite done yet, but we have a deep blue. I know a lot of people like these. This thing's got a helium escape valve. It's kind of like an overgrown SKX. That's basically what I see here with my eyes. Um, and then lastly, check this out. A Longines automatic square. Kind of like a tank looking watch. Uh, what is this called? The uh, Dell something, whatever. Uh, pretty cool watch. Uh, maybe limited edition? No? No, that's just a serial number. I wish I had a need for one of these watches. Because check this out. I don't know, man. That thing just, they wear so good. Maybe I need to look at some uh, uh, rectangle type watches. Because I don't have a need for it, but dang it, these are cool. Uh, maybe at some point I would wear it. I don't know. Maybe I'll just... Put it in the box where, like, I think it's really cool, but I don't need to own it. That's a, a box that I've created, and often watches that I think are really cool that I think I want to buy, they need to just go in that box. I can like the watch and not own it, and that's where some of these watches enter into that category. So I don't know how many are there. I didn't count them. And then this is part two. You guys already watched part one. So I have to sort all this out and see which ones I want to video, maybe do some batteries get those up and running, uh, solar charge ones that are low, and then um, off to the chopping block they go. See you guys on the next vid.